Do you have any objection with taking the prescribed oath? No. Do you consider the oath to be binding on your conscience? Yes. Do you swear that the evidence you will give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please raise your right hand and say, so help me God. So help me God. Ntlantla Nene was perhaps most famous in South Africa for being on a broken chair during an interview with the SABC several years ago. But he soon shot to fame when he became finance minister for a brief period in 2015 and then was summarily removed from office in December by then President Jacob Zuma, a move that sent shockwaves through the South African economy. That removal was later resoundingly met with further shock when former Deputy Finance Minister Mkabisi Jonas revealed that the Gupta family had offered him Nene's position in exchange for certain favours that he would do for them and a sum of about 600 million rand. It was those revelations that effectively started the former public protector Tuli Malansela's state capture investigation and would ironically lead to the very inquiry that has now cost Ntlantla Nene his position. Last week he came to that inquiry and gave evidence about how he had had multiple, what he described as innocent meetings with the Gupta family um, over the years spanning from about 2009. But the problem was Nene had lied about those meetings in a 2016 interview he did with ENCA in which he actively denied that he had had any engagement with the Gupta family. Following the revelations of his apparent dishonesty and certain media reports about his son's business dealings with the PIC while he had been chairperson of that organization, there were growing calls for his resignation. He then offered, uh, he asked effectively for President Cyril Ramaphosa to relieve him of his duties, which the President has now done, replacing him with former Reserve Bank Governor Tito Mbaweni. At this stage, we have no idea why Ntlantla Nene chose to lie to ENCA in that 2016 interview. He will be facing cross-examination about why he did that and indeed about the revelations concerning his son and the PIC. He has consistently denied any wrongdoing but has admitted that he showed a loss of failure in judgment in being dishonest about his meetings with the Guptas.